here's my recumbent tricycle. I'm going to show you how I constructed it and then later converted it to an e-trike. I store it vertically in the garage so it doesn't take up too much space. So here it is down. It's about seven foot long. It's constructed about 20 years ago, before, long before YouTube was around, so I can't show you how I actually did it, but I can tell you what I did. I bought a bunch of bikes from an auction, got them real cheap, and uh, cut them up and then re-welded them back together to build the frame. It has under seat searing. I'll show you more of that later here. The seat is from an own office chair that I had recovered. It used to be brown. It cost me $40 to have that redone. That was, again, about 20 years ago. The stuff that you use on the back is what they use in ditches to stop erosion. Again, I got that at an auction in a big roll. Got pretty lucky with that. I, you could probably use some other type of cloth there. Okay, so the front here is from a five-speed bicycle, and you can see how I, I cut it out here and just kept all this part down to here and then welded in some part uh, bars from a 10-speed to go to the back. Now, my weldings aren't the greatest because I just learned how to weld back then, and I didn't have the greatest wire welder, but it does hold together well, just doesn't look pretty. So the gooseneck is off a 10-speed bicycle. The forks are off that same five speed uh, 20 inch bike and then I just put a regular 20 inch wheel on the front use the brakes the hand brakes it has front and rear brakes just like regular brakes they're down here it only breaks one of the rear wheels the drive wheel is freewheeling, no brake on it. It's five speed. That was getting off the five speed bike, 20 inch boys bike. So here's where I found an identical bike at the same auction. It wasn't a five speed, but it did have the same, the same rear frame here. So I was able to uh, duplicate everything on the other side, except for this was a free wheel. Now it's got my electric wheel but it was a free wheel at that time so as far as I how I welded them together this is part of one bike here I didn't have to do anything here I did add the half inch conduit up here got a foot ball for a headrest this is again from the five-speed bike it had straight handlebars I cut them in half and then mounted them vertically and this is just a regular uh, handlebar extension so the brakes mount right here same thing on the other side so down here I just used some flat metal welded it on here and this is where it gets a little complicated here as far as drivetrain I'll show you from this angle, and then I'll show you from the other angle. The tricky part was taking the center drive chain and transferring it over to the drive wheel. So I took a hub off one of these bikes, welded it in here, and then I welded a bar. This is actually a half inch or a three quarter inch, I don't know, half inch, I think, a black iron pipe and it transfers over to this outside hub. And you just see I cut the cranks up, crank up pedals off it. So then it just, you can change the sprocket to change your gear ratio. Um, then that goes down to the regular five speed cassette back there. And you shift gears. Only this one is operational. Go one through five, just shift it. This one just does nothing. It's just on there for. So up front again, put a small sprocket, just 
to get the gear ratio I wanted. And I welded another hub off another bicycle on there. Not the greatest welds, but it does work. So it's centered straight back. And then I put this extra 10 speed tensioner just to take up slack in the chain because everything wasn't perfect. It works really well. So when I did this, I had it all jigged up at the height I wanted and everything on a wooden frame. So then I could weld it up pretty true. And these bars are out from another bicycle, these skinny bars that hold the two frames back together. There's the controller for the for the e-bike. But originally I didn't have that. This is the battery holder for the e-bike. Originally also I didn't have that. I built this whole thing for under 100 bucks. And the $40 of that was that seat being reconditioned. Probably cost me another three, three, four hundred dollars to add the E wheel to it. I think it was about three hundred dollars with the battery a couple years ago. So originally it did have just a free wheel back here, like the front. I could have put the, the drive wheel up front if I wanted to, but you need a lot of traction. You need to be sitting over the top of the wheel. So that's why I chose to put it back here. Works really well. So the under seat steering works well. I just welded on these little tabs. Then I got these universal ball joints. I got them from actually from a swap shop for doing stock, stock cars, they had them. And I don't know why they have them, but you can probably get them off Amazon now. They're just threaded. They go into this threaded rod. This is threaded aluminum rod. I think I also got that from the stock car people. I don't know what they use it for, but. And then back here. I use those again. And they just pivot. on the bottom which I did originally right here it was wrong the steering worked in the opposite direction that was intuitive and it was crazy to ride so I had to move them up here on both of them it's just the way you push or pull determines if you go left or right and this was ended up being the natural way as opposed to having them originally mounted down here Okay, so let's see if I can show you how I did the steering pivot. You can see both sides. It's just a threaded rod that runs through. Right to here. Right to here. And then this this rod just fits over the this black rod just slides over the top of the fitted rod. Right rod, I mean. So it just pivots over that rod, and that stationary threaded rod is through there. And I just welded the handlebar to it. So that's how the whole mechanism works. It's relatively simple. Okay, with the bike vertically mounted, I can show you some other stuff. You can actually see how this steering works much better. It's just a howl rod with the threaded rod running through it. See how I did my drivetrain? Four welds and all. Seats mounted with a, just a bracket. Put some bolts going into the seat. There. And there. Some of the e bike wiring. Bottom bar I had to customize, bend it, and weld it in to hold those two hubs. It has to be pretty solid because you put a lot of stress on this. It's upper bar there too. Put a lot of stress on this when you're trying to climb a hill or something. 
So the drivetrain has to be really, really rigid. There's another shot of the 10 speed derailleur I put on there just to take up tension in the train in the chain. Just bolted it out there in line with the chain. So here's how you get on the trike. You just step over it. Got the MC steering. Front brake, rear brake, the throttle for the e-bike. Here's where you shift the gears. And then you just crank and go. So here's me sitting on it. I can comfortably pedal on the flats, probably 12, 13 mile an hour with the gear ratio I have. With the e-bike conversion, you can not pedal at all and go about 20 mile an hour. Pretty nice. Also assist you on the hills when you're going up the hills. So as far as the e-bike conversion, I bought this 20 inch wheel off the internet. It comes with a controller. I think it's a 36 volt, 750 watt controller and wheel. And I just mounted it on the bottom of the seat here. Run the cables, it's pretty much plug and play. Here's the battery holder and the wire to the wheel. And then you also can hook up the hand brakes to make them shut the power off when you hit the brakes just so it's not fighting itself if it doesn't shut down when you let go of the throttle. This is thumb throttle on this one. Just push it with your thumb to go. Here's the battery. It's 36 volt, 13 amp hour. Comes with a charger and the keys. You can lock it on the bicycle so nobody can steal it. Also, it doesn't fall off. Your on off switch, then your battery level indicator. You just mount it up on the rack. So with the battery mounted and locked into place, you just turn it on. I usually leave the battery on during the summer. I can, you can charge it right on the bike. I only take it off during the winter months. Just take it inside to store it. The throttle has an on off. Turn the throttle on, then you just hit the thumb screw and the wheel goes. variable speed like I said it goes about 20 mile an hour so here it is I had to do it all over again I'd probably get a thousand watt wheel this 750 watt wheel you have to kind of start pedaling before it starts it won't start from a dead stop by itself very easily but then it, once it's going it's going pretty good it helps you on the hills assisting but a thousand watt wheel would probably do better the battery the 13 amp hour it seems to be sufficient I take it on little rides half hour 45 minutes and don't even use half a charge but I'm, I'm also not using it full time. The other thing I would change is I'd probably make it a little bit wider and I'd sit down between the wheels. Just make it more stable for curves.